Uh, yes, hello. My name is Jason Christopher, and uh, so excited to be here with you today. Um, we are going to be doing a movie versus trailer review uh, for Spider-Man No Way Home, and I am here with J-Rock, uh, the YouTube people. Oh, that's right, baby. J-Rock is here, and we're about to do what J-Rock likes to call his for Spider-Man No Way Home. Oh, this is one of the most anticipated movies of all time with the most electrifying YouTuber in all of youtube tainment with the most electrifying movie review in all of youtube tainment a movie versus trailer review warning this does contain spoilers so if you have not seen it and you don't want it spoiled for you you make sure that you go away and you watch it come back and let j-rock know which one you thought was better the movie or the trailer because that's exactly what a movie versus trailer review is we're going to go through the trailer and then we're going to pick apart and we're going to determine which one J-Rock thought was better, the movie or the trailer. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing right here in Spider-Man No Way Home. And J-Rock says this, Jabroni, you make damn well sure that when it gets to the parts that J-Rock told you ahead of time, you stop it. J-Rock is going to lay the smack down on this review like nobody else can. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Um... I, I, I will definitely do that uh, as we agreed um, and, and, and uh, guys just, just buckle up it's gonna be uh, a very very fun ride as we're gonna go through through the trailer and discuss what needs to be discussed um, yes yes so uh, without we're not gonna wait anymore let's go right ahead and uh, get started shall we? Yes, right here. Uh, tell the people exactly what's going on right here, J Rock. Well, Jabroni J Rock says this what's happening right here is this is right at the beginning of the movie, right towards the beginning. Spider Man No Way Home picks up right after Spider Man uh, Far From Home. Or, or whatever the damn other uh, previous Spider-Man movie was. It doesn't matter what it's called. The only thing that matters is that Mysterio has let the cat out of the bag. He has broke the proverbial superhero bro code, if you will, and he has revealed the secret identity of Spider-Man being none other, that's right, than Peter Parker. And as you can, as you can see in the trailer, Peter Parker's life spirals out of control. But not just his, his friend, uh, his friends, his girlfriend, his aunt, her love, everybody that is associated with Peter Parker, life is out of control. And so now, right here what's happening is that they have returned to school and now they have to go and find a little secret getaway spot in order to be able to let the woosa happen as need be. Jabroni, no rhyme intended on that line. But the fact of the matter is, is that this is right at the beginning of the movie, and we just are getting started. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's keep right on going. That's right, folks. Spider-Man is in fact Peter Parker. Listen, I did not kill Mysterio. The drones did. The drones that are yours. All right, let's let's let J-Rock feel free to let everybody know in a. And if I'm not mistaken, there's a very, very special guest appearance uh, in this part of the movie. Oh, you got that right, Jabroni. J-Rock says what's happening in this part of the movie is that now that Peter Parker's identity has been revealed and it is found out that the drones that killed Mysterio is now associated with Tony Stark, created by Tony Stark, that were used and operated by none other than Spider-Man Peter Parker. And so now the feds have come looking for Peter. They've arrested him. 
his aunt, his best friend. They brought everybody in for questions, all right? And they have to, you know, lay it all out there. Let them know what happened. You know, Mary Jane is playing Mary Jane. And um, what, what, what is Peter Parker's friend name? J-Rock forgets. Told you it doesn't matter what your name is! But the fact of the matter is, is that um, Aunt May is locked up. And um, yeah, everybody is brought in for questioning, all right? And then, unexpectedly, shockingly, surprisingly, there's a very special guest appearance. Oh, that's right, baby. From none other than the Daredevil himself, Matt Murdock. Not in his Daredevil uniform or in his Daredevil uh, character, but he is playing the role of Peter Parker's lawyer, Matt Murdock. That's right, baby. And he is right there with Peter Parker. And there's this you little incident giving us a little Easter egg, if you will, that when something is getting ready to fall off the shelf, Matt Murdock, who is supposed to be blind, but we all know who he really is, actually catches it before it falls. And Peter Parker is looking at him like, how the hell did you do that? How did you know that was going to fall? Do you have a spidey sense like, like Spider-Man? Nah, you just call it the daredevil sense. But regardless of what you call it, the fact of the matter is, is that Matt Murdock, the one and only, is in this movie. Oh, and J-Rock was so damn excited when he got to see Matt Murdock because he did not like how the damn daredevil series was just canceled. Just like that on Netflix. Netflix be canceling crap left and right. Don't get time to build an audience. If you don't build it right away, damn, you're gone. But with that being said, J-Rock was happy that Matt, Mur Matt Murdock was in the building. Now let's keep it going, Jabroni. Yes, yes, right away, we're just gonna keep it on going, keep it on going. All right, J-Rock, can you just tell the people what's going on here? Doesn't look like um, maybe he's in a different place or something like that. Let us know what's going on. Well, what's going on right here, Jabroni, is very, very simple. Now that the feds have found out where Peter Parker resides, he and his Aunt May, then Aunt May has to bunk up, if you will, with uh, Spider-Man's you know, right-hand man. I think his name is Lucky. Oh, it doesn't matter what his name is. The only fact of the matter is that they're now having to go to his secret spot in order to get some solace and peace and quiet from all of the hoopla because everybody knows exactly where Spider-Man is now. And so they have to go there in order to get a little peace and quiet. That's all this is, Jabroni. I don't know why you want to ask J-Rock stupid questions, but keep going. Uh, of course, of course. Thank you so much. And let's just keep it moving right along. I heard I never wanted to lie. You have to tell someone. This isn't about me. This is hurting a lot of people. I've just been thinking about how to fix all of this. So, Peter, why do I owe the pleasure? I'm sorry to bother you, sir. Please, we saved half the universe together. I think we're beyond you calling you, sir. Okay, Stephen. That feels weird, but I'll allow it. When is Yes, yes, so right here in this scene, what, what's what's going on right here? It seems pretty hectic. Well, what's going on right here, Jabroni, is that after uh, the spell has been cast, all right, they've gotten the unexpected visitors, but one of the unexpected visitors was that right, none other than the Green Goblin. The Green Goblin, Norman Osborn, all right, has come back uh, to the Spider-Man franchise, making his presence known in a mighty big way j-rock says and what's happening is that um apparently aunt may calls peter up and lets him know hey one of those special people just walked in to where i am and that sends peter into a frenzy sends peter into a panic and so he rushes over to where aunt may is where she's uh where she is right there and she is sitting down having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Peter, I'm sorry, with Norman Osborn. Because Norman Osborn is trying to fight back. Uh, or maybe he's being manipulated by the Green Goblin. 
You just don't know. But that is what's happening here in this scene, Jabroni. All right, let's go. Serial revealed my identity. My entire life got screwed up. I was wondering if maybe you could make it so that you never did. Strange. Don't cast that spell. It's too dangerous. Fine. I won't. All right, right here. You uh, want to explain what's going on here? Yes, Jabroni, this is exactly one of the main reasons why J-Rock does a movie versus trailer review is because one of the things that really irks the YouTube people's champ is with, when they put things in the trailer to sell the movie, but when you watch the movie, what was in the trailer is not actually in the movie, all right? And this is just another prime example of something that was in the trailer that was not in the movie. This scene where Mr. Wang, all right, tells Dr. Strange, no rhyme intended on that line, don't cast the spell. It's too dangerous. That part is not in the movie. Not in the movie at all. All right? Now, is it a deal breaker in the movie? Absolutely not. But it's just something that J-Rock noticed wasn't in the movie. So keep going, Jabroni. All right, perfect, perfect. Great explanation. We're just gonna move right along here, J-Rock. Forget the Peter Parker Spider Man. Wait, everyone? Can some people still know? That's not how the spell works. So MJ and Peter forget about everything we've ever been through. Stop tampering with the spell. Oh my god, Ned, he's my best friend. Well, my Aunt May should really stop talking. All right, J-Rock, you just want to kind of let everybody know what's going on. And this part of the scene doesn't appear to be uh, what it seems or isn't. So J-Rock says this, Jabroni, were you born at night or last night? Because the fact of the matter is, is that what's happening in this part of the scene is just as it seems, Jabroni, Dr. Strange is casting the spell to try to make everybody and their mama's dog forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. However, Peter doesn't want everybody to forget. He wants MJ, Ned, Hunt, and everybody else. And even doing the part uh, where Dr. Tr Strange is casting the spell, he is making some configurations, if you will, that certain people, first I think he starts out with MJ, right? Then I think he adds Ned, but, but the problem is, is that Peter Parker won't stop talking. He won't stop saying, well, what about this person? And well, what about that person? And eventually his blabber mouth uh, modifies the spell. And as you can see, the stuff hits the people's fan right and then dr strange has to try to contain it and no one is uh to the wiser of what has actually happened no one is no, none wiser that the multiverse has just been opened until dr octopus shows up and so jabroni that's what's going on let's keep going perfect perfect let's move right along shall we And so what was going on right here, J Rod? What 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 is all this 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 um this scene right here? Tell the people at home what's happening right now. Well Jabroni J Rock says this. What's happening right here is that Doctor Strange reveals to Peter that the fate of all of these Spider-Man enemies that have come from different universes is that when he sends them back, sends them home, all right? Their fate is sealed. Spider-Man in their universe is going to lay the smack down on them and they're all going to die. And so Peter Parker, being the humanitarian that he is, says, I can't let that happen. I can't just send them back to some Rudy Pooh universe where they're gonna die. I have to do something. And so Doctor Strange has this spell cast in this box. And so Spider-Man, as seen in the other trailer, steals the box. Oh, and at that point forward, he then tries to go one on one with Doctor Strange. And Doctor Strange sends him to 
the um, mirror reality, um, mirror realm, or it doesn't matter what its name is. The fact of the matter is, is that it's pretty damn cool. Some of the best graphics J-Rock has seen in a mighty long time. You actually great one himself. But with that being said, he and Peter go toe to toe, right? And uh, Peter actually ends up getting the upper hand on Doctor Strange, webs him, takes the box, um, and in doing so, he steals Dr. Strange's ring that allows him to open portals, all right? And so he webs Dr. Strange, takes the box, escapes through a portal, and leaves Dr. Strange in this mirror universe where he is, which allows Peter the time he needs to be able to formulate a plan to try to get these Spider-Man, uh, or these bad Spider-Man villains back home safely. He tries to fix them, if you will. So. That's what's happening right here in this scene, Jabroni. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. We're just going to keep going right along here. Uh, make sure that you, if you're enjoying the content, you're making sure you're hitting that like button and you're subscribing to uh, J-Rock's channel, all right? Let's keep it going. This is a concept about which we know frighteningly little. The problem is you trying to live two different lives. All right, J-Rock, why don't you tell the people at home what happened right here that they got you so excited. That's J-Rock's line, Jabroni. Don't you ever do that again. Oh, well, J-Rock says this. This part of the movie was very, very exciting for the great one. Because, you see, this was right when Peter and uh, Doctor Strange was getting ready to go one-on-one. -on -one. Doctor Strange brings him back in, and he separates his physical separates him from his physical body in an attempt to take back the spell box from spider-man but to his shock and dismay spider-man wouldn't have let him take it and you're wondering well how the hell he can't take it it's almost as that he's having an out-of-body experience and he shouldn't have any control over his limbs but shockingly enough spider-man was dodging dr strange's attempt to get the box back and so Peter swam, or air swam, if you will, back into his physical form, and that's when the fight pursued, which I found very, very entertaining. I like the way they did that. Let's just keep going, Jabroni. J-Rock got stuff to do. Yes, yes, that was a very, very uh, entertaining part to this movie. And so we're just gonna keep going right through this. All right, so right here, J-Rock, what's happening with Peter right here? Well, what's happening right here is that um, Peter himself, himself, uh, friend Ned and uh, MJ are trying to get into you MIT, but the problem is working. they all get rejected because the fact that they all know who Spider-Man is, all right? And so MIT just kind of says, no, no, thank you. Thank you for applying. God bless and good night. However, Peter tracks down the, you know, one of the people in, you know, I guess the decision makers uh, for student enrollment and try to convince her to let them in and don't blame Spider-Man because they did no nothing wrong. Well, in the midst of Peter attempting to have this conversation, the multiverse is open. And here comes the first one on the scene, none other than Dr. Otto Octavian. And they have a little scuffle or kerfluffle, if you will. No rhyme intended on that line. And so as an, in an attempt to try to even up the odds, here comes the Spider-Man arm out of the uh was this the end game suit if i'm not mistaken but uh or no this wasn't from infinity war yo that's right gay rock says this is from infinity war where the spider-man arms are out and now it's uh even playing field now so that's what's happening right here very exciting perfect perfect let's just keep going right along you do it the more dangerous it becomes all right so what's happening right here why does he have this look on his face Oh, J-Rock says this. This was um, it's a very sad part of the movie, J-Rock has to admit. Um, because as you know, one of Peter's closest confidants is none other than his aunt. No rhyme intended on that line. Spider-Man is, uh, is attempting to try to fix, if you will, the other villains. And in doing so, he actually... Right, the way that Spider Man was able to defeat Dr. Octopus, okay, is that he has this I don't know what you call it, some device that allows him to download access to Dr. Otto Octavius's arms. And so, 
when he downloads, you know, the, the software or whatever that allows him to be able to, to control uh, Dr. Octopus's arms, he uses that to ca capture Dr. Octopus, right? But as soon as he cap captures Dr. Octopus, all you hear is, ah, 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 ah. And here comes Green Goblin. The bomb explodes, and he has to go and try to trap him and uh, get him done. Well, Peter is, you know, the humanitarian that he is, is trying his best to try to get these people, all right, back home, but with a second chance. So he's trying to fix them, if you will, all right? And the Green Goblin is manipulating Norman Osborn into thinking that he is helping Peter. But through the process, spider sense begins to tingle and it begins to tingle hard. And this is a part of the movie where we're wondering, at least Jay Rocky is, is, is Dr. Strange coming back? Is, is he messing with reality or some sort? But actually, his spider sense is tingling hard. And that's when he shoots a web at uh, Green Goblin, Norman Osborn, trapping his hand to the wall. And that's when Norman Osborn uh, or Green Goblin comes uh, comes out and saying, oh, there's nothing wrong with us. We don't need to be fixed. These aren't curses. These are gifts. All right. And then, you know, Electro, he goes off. All right. And then um, Green Goblin goes off. Dr. Octopus has basically, I guess you could say Dr. Octopus has been cured somewhat. And he tries to help Peter, but things just don't go the way they're supposed to. And let's just say that Green Goblin was probably the most diabolical villain in this entire movie. Very vindictive evil, if you will. And as you can see in the building where you know all this is going on, Green Goblin tosses a bomb. Well, let me rewind that back. Green Goblin's glider actually goes and it hits Aunt May hard. It's a real hard. And after his glider comes back, he takes a bomb, one of his little green bombs, and he throws it. Boom. Explosion. Spider-Man tries to catch it, but too little too late. And in this scene, Aunt May doesn't die right away. But they're talking, and you think she's fine. She said, I'm okay. Are you okay? I'm okay. They get, begin to talk. And she's like, all of a sudden, she just falls down. And Peter's like, what's wrong? What's, well, what's the matter? She's like, nothing. I've just, just got to catch my breath. He's like, okay, well, catch your breath, because we got to get out of here. And um, she never caught her breath. In fact, she took her last breath right there right there she took her last breath very sad part of the movie because she was I think the only family he had left if you will and so it was very very heartbreaking for the great one did J-Rock cry? hell no J-Rock didn't cry alright the other Gibraltars were crying J-Rock wouldn't cry alright J-Rock said suck it up that's what J-Rock told him and you know what they did it up but with that being said very sad part of the movie and so that's why this jabroni is pulling up because he's you know her he and i may were a thing if you will um and he the look on his face tells it all yeah she's gone peter's heartbroken and uh very very sad part of the movie so that's what's going on right here jabroni all right let's keep right on going So t take us through this part of the movie. Oh, what's happening here is exactly what J-Rock said. Dr. Octopus shows up on the scene and Green Goblin isn't too far behind. Peter, so Peter, you know, has to transform into Spider-Man suit. Fight ensues. And that's pretty much it. But J-Rock has already told you about this. Let's just keep it going. Perfect, perfect. Let's keep going right along.
wow, such an amazing movie. Uh, and, and, and I was very excited to see it. Uh, J-Rock, is there anything else about this movie that you want people to know? Yeah, Jabroni. As a matter of fact, it is. Um, great action. Great action. And if you're wondering, are the other Spider-Mans in this movie? Oh, rest assured, bet your bottom dollar, J-Rock. We're not going to let this review go by without spilling those beans. And the answer is, oh, hell yeah. They are in this movie. Now, J-Rock said the only thing he would have tweaked about it was the fact that how they came, all right? So you remember when J-Rock says Dr. Strange had his ring stolen by Peter? Well, Peter actually gave the ring to his friend Ned. And, you know, it was after that whole explosion and Aunt May dies, Peter just kind of gets away from everybody. And so uh, Ned and MJ, they're waiting on Peter. They hadn't heard from him, don't know where he is. And so Ned says to himself, man, I just wish I could see Peter. And he moves his hand like that. And he sees a little spark happen in midair. So he does it again. I just want to see Peter. And he does it again. All of a sudden, this big portal opens up. And they think they see Peter. And they start calling his name, Peter, Peter. And all of a sudden, he starts running towards him. Now, J-Rock is thinking, it may not be who I think it is. It may be, you know, a villain or somebody. But actually, it is Spider-Man. Spider-Man jumps through the portal. It's just not that Peter Parker. Oh, no, 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 no. It is Andrew Garfield, Peter Parker, as he takes off his mask and like, where the hell am I? What, what's going on? I've been here. I don't know what's going on, you know. And he reveals that, yeah, he's there. All right. Um, and then, as he has to prove he's Spider-Man, they try it again. The whole thing. I just want to see Peter. Opens it up. Same thing happened, only this time, Toby comes through the portal. Toby McGuire. And uh, so all Spider-Man, well, those two Spider-Man are there. And they have a little, you know, shooting thing, if you will, web shooting. It's kind of like, okay, what's going on? Like, you're Spider-Man? Yeah, I'm Spider-Man. Like, Spider-Man, you know. And so it's, it's, it's a very hype scene. You know, when Andrew takes off his mask, I'm just, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. J-Rock was very, very excited uh, to see Andrew because uh, I thought he was like, you know, the regular Peter. And then he took his mask off and was like, oh, oh, you know. But the only thing I would have changed is that I wouldn't have brought him back in the same scene. I would have tried to bring him back, you know, a little later on separately. Um, maybe later on in the movie, you know, when there's the fight scene, the climactic fight scene at the end. Uh, Mary J, as in the trailer, is falling down. You know, um, her Peter Parker. Um, Tom, or I say Tom Holland, his Peter Parker, tries to jump down and catch him. Catch her, rather. But Green Goblin throws his uh, glider at him and intercepts him. And so Andrew Gar R. Garfield's Spy Spider-Man jumps down grabs and save her and you see he's emotional he's crying because he's thinking about Gwen Stacy how he couldn't save her but he saved MJ so it was it wasn't uh Tom Holland Spider-Man it was Andrew Spider-Man they call him but called her rather and then ultimately they defeat everybody they cure um everybody um there's a reference to Miles Morales where Jamie Foxx Shocker says, oh, there has to be a black Spider-Man somewhere. Little hint in there. Uh, but what J-Rock found extremely uh, saddening is the ending. And so, oh yeah, forgot to throw this part in there. Tom Holland Spider-Man is going one-on-one -on -one with Green Goblin and he is laying the smack at the down on his Rudy Poo candy ass. And right when he was getting ready to take the glider and stab him and kill him with it, Tobey Maguire interferes. It's like, no, we're not doing that. We're not killing him. And as, you know, uh, Toby is Spider-Man is holding the glider, Green Goblin stabs Toby in the back, literally. Stabs him in the back. You thought that would have killed him. 
you thought, oh man, somebody gets stabbed in the back, he's dead. He's gone. No, no, that's not what happened. Um, you could basically say he almost damn near just walked it off. Right? Would have been very, very um, interesting had they allowed Tobey Maguire Spider-Man to die. But that didn't happen. So after they defeat everybody, get everybody cured, and they're trying to send everybody back, Doctor Strange uh, has returned, of course. Um, thank to, thanks to, you know, Ned trying to open up a portal. But Doctor Strange comes through, says he's been webbed up in another dimension for 12 hours. Right? I'm like, bruh, you had to go to the bathroom and I like that, you know. Anyway, but J Rock says the scene where Doctor Strange is saying they're starting to come through and I can't stop it. And what he's saying is that because of the spell, everybody knows Peter Parker is Spider Man. So everybody is coming to his dimension to get him. And so he tells Doctor Strange, well, what if you cast a spell that nobody knows? Him? And he's like, it'll work. He's be like, yeah, but it'll, it'll be, Doctor Strange is telling uh, Tom Holland, Spider-Man, it'll be like, you never existed. Nobody will know you. Including MJ, including Ned, nobody will know who you are, all right? And he was like, but it'll it'll work, woman. He's like, yeah, it'll work. It'll work. And so he goes and tells Ned and MJ what's happening. And of course, MJ don't want that to happen. And he promises her, he said, I'll find you. I will find you and tell you everything. All right? And Ned said, you know, made him promise. They do the little bro handshake or whatever. He and MJ, you know, little love scene, kiss scene right there. Um, and he says it's a goodbye. Doctor Strange completes the spell. The, you know, fabric of reality is fixed, if you will. And, um, everybody goes back to where they're supposed to go. And now, the ending part. To um, this, the only Spider-Man now is Tom Holland's Spider-Man. And so he's walking down the street, rehearsing how he's going to tell MJ, who he is, whatever thing happened. And so, yeah, she's still working at this little diner or whatever, this coffee shop. And uh, he walks in and he sees her. And then, you know, she's like waving and he's thinking she's waving at, at him. But in fact, Ned is coming up behind him and she's waving at Ned. And I'm thinking like, oh my God, are they a couple? Are they, are, are they together? No, that's not what they are. Um, and he's looking at her, trying to figure out a way, how do I tell her this? But he doesn't actually tell her what's going on. He doesn't tell her who he is. He doesn't tell her nothing. Um, I'm sitting there thinking like, okay, come on, tell her, tell her, tell her, tell her, you know. They have a little exchange back and forth where he's like finishing, finishing her sentences. And she's like, wow, that's weird. How do you know all this? Um, but he never actually tells her who he is, you know, and J-Rock says he thinks that he has sort of this epiphany where he says to himself, you know, if she never knew who I was, none of this would even happen. So I think he just kind of second guesses it and says, you know what, I'm just, I think it's better that she doesn't know. At least for now, she doesn't know. Now that's not to say later on they don't, you know, hook up or whatever because there was a lot of cliffhangers. Uh, in this movie but um, yeah um, she finds out or she doesn't find out who he is he goes and he gets himself an apartment similar to the apartment that you know Pete had in Spider-Man 1 and 2 um, and so he's living alone which is very very sad um, because now he's truly alone. No Aunt May. He goes to visit her grave. And um, I think his name is Lucky. I can't remember. Um, you know, Tony Stark's driver or whatever. And they are at each other's grave. And uh, he asks him, he said, he's talking to Peter. He says, how, do you, how did you know her? Because he doesn't know who Peter is now anyway. He's like, I know her through Spider-Man. He's like... Yeah, so Peter is definitely 
alone. Nobody knows who he is. Nobody knows he's Spider-Man. Um, J. Jonah Jameson is hating like he always does on Spider-Man. Like, just the most diabolical hate of this side of the Mississippi is Joe J. It's J. Jonah Jameson. All right, but this movie was emotional. This movie was um, great storytelling. Uh, wasn't perfect, but it was damn sure good. Lived up to the hype. And so, yeah, Jabroni, J-Rock says this was a damn good movie. Right? I would agree. I would agree um, 100%. Well, J-Rock, thank you for your time. Thank you guys for watching. And, of course, no, 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 Jabroni. No, no. We're not going to end it like that. We're going to end it like the way J-Rock ends it. And J-Rock has to give his verdict. I think this one is crystal clear. It's probably the most crystal clear movie versus trailer review J-Rock has ever done. On which one he thought was better, the movie or the trailer? I think this one is unanimous. The movie lived up to the hype. The movie was damn sure better than the trailer. And J-Rock says he's gonna see it again. And again, and damn sure again, all right? Now, what say you? Have you seen it? What did you think? Which one did you think was better? The movie or the trailer? Post it down below and let J-Rock know which one you thought was better. And also let J-Rock know what you thought of his movie versus trailer review. All right? A little under the weather, but J-Rock is here for the millions of millions of J-Rock's fans. All right? All right? If you enjoyed J-Rock's movie versus trailer review, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and share. Be sure to hit that bell so you can be notified and it is time to be electrified. Thank you for joining J-Rock. Until next time. Mamba, Gigi, and Wakanda forever. Give you a smile. What J-Rock is cooking.